questions while we're, talk while we're waiting for this to happen. If you have any questions for Sam, we could do that very quickly. Neil? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Sam, there are plenty of things people do that don't make sense, but of course they're otherwise harmless to others and might be mildly harmless to the person who thinks it or believes it, but um, no one makes a big deal of it. If the religious community, instead of going away, morphed into a system, systems of philosophy that made no attempt to say things about the physical world that are easily verifiable by the methods and tools of science and, and rational inquiry. And they only simply talked about, you know, how to treat your neighbor, how to, you know, maybe give you some place to think you might be when you're dead. Um, what's the harm in that? If, it, if, it, if we're going to try to be realistic about how effective any such movement that you, that you want to support can be, mm. are you going to say one day there's going to be no religions in the world, or one day there's a profile of the various religions that have changed to the point where they don't trigger anybody's reaction, anyone such as your reaction. Right, right. Um, well, I'm just not hopeful that they can change. They can be so chaste in their, in their proclamations about reality so as not to conflict with, with those of us who are trying to, to speak sensibly about reality and, and to, to shape public policy that's based on sensible conversation. So for instance, you know, what do you do when you find out that your neighbor's religion has proscribed uh, drawing a caricature of a certain historical figure and has prescribed it in such terms that you can get 100,000 people in the, in the town square calling for the deaths of newspaper editors and cartoonists for drawing, you know, for publishing pictures of the Prophet Muhammad? Uh, it seems to me that really is a deal breaker. I mean, this is just you know, free speech and rational uh, understandings of civil society just have to win. You know, it's just, there's no accommodation with that. What was so scandalous about that, that episode is that uh, we really caved in. I mean, we, we practiced self-censorship. Censorship. We, we chastised Denmark for uh, publishing those, those cartoons. And New York Times wrote editorials you know, about, about it. And we're not recognizing uh, the bigger picture here, which is, these, these are, this is an, an eruption of medievalism that is sanctioned by the, the fastest growing religion in the world. And here again, I'm, I'm focusing on Islam uh, uh, almost randomly. I mean, I'm, I'm worried about religion in totality. But uh, it's, it, you have to get, if you're going to dignify the claim that one of our books is not just a book, but is in some sense an infallible document, you are, it seems to me, always going to be held hostage to the contents of the book. And, and it just so happens that these books are, are, are engines of intolerance. I mean, you just, you know, 100 years from now, someone can pick up the Quran or the Bible and find reasons to be every bit as obnoxious as Ted Haggard or worse. Uh, and those reasons are continually refreshing themselves. So unless we undercut this notion that the Bible and the Quran are not at all like the plays of Shakespeare, uh, I just, I don't think the problem can go away. Yeah, I'm going to have to be an engine of intolerance because yeah. I'm hostage to time, so. Um, 